This is the Your Career Story podcast, and you're listening to episode 46. Ladies, let us help you negotiate 20,000 more. Welcome to Your Career Story podcast, a show that's designed for rock star professionals looking for that extra booster shot of confidence in their careers. Whether you're trying to get clarity on a job transition, want some work-life balance inspiration, or need a strategy to snag that promotion or raise, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, ex-Wall Streeter turned startup junkie who now coaches hundreds of clients, empowering them to take back control of the job search and land their dream job. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, and prepare yourself for your weekly boost of career confidence. Hi, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Your Career Story podcast. I'm your host, Jenna Viviano, and I am so excited to have you here. Can you believe that we are already into February? (laughs) That is one twelfth of the year gone. And I hope that you've been thinking a lot about your career if you're listening to this podcast. I've been getting so much feedback from you guys. It is so encouraging for me as a podcaster, as somebody who kind of records things, sends it out into the abyss, gets some feedback. But if you ever have any feedback or if you have any thoughts or something really resonated with you, please reach out to me on LinkedIn. That's where I live the most. That's where I produce the most career content besides this podcast. And so it would be so encouraging for me to hear from you personally. And I always try to respond to every single one of those messages if you have said that you have been listening on the podcast. So Please do that. It's so fun for us. But today's episode is a little bit different than um, what we've ever done in the past. And reason being is I've gotten a lot of questions over the past, since 2020 really started, so over the past month or so, about how do I work with you? Um, What do you offer? How does it work? And why have you chosen to work with women, only women this year? And so I want to kind of talk through some of those reasonings, why that was a really hard process for me last year to decide to officially do that and to pick the program that I did. Um, But I really am so excited about it because I really think that we can help change a generation of women. And that is super, super important to me. And I didn't realize how important it was to me until the end of this past year when I had some conversations with some folks and some mentors and really being thoughtful about the legacy that I want to leave in my business, but also just in the world and what that looks like for my small little corner. So I wanted to talk to you today about my signature program, which is called Recruit the Employer, because I really believe that this is the solution to help 100K plus women really understand where their value is in their job, help them market themselves, and then ultimately negotiate more money so that over the long term, we can get rid of the stinking gender pay gap, (laughs) right? So annoying. So I want to do my little bit and little part to help women learn how to negotiate more money in their career because money is not a bad thing. And I think that we have been programmed as women and just as a generation that money is bad, money is totally greedy, awful, awful, awful. And I think the love of money can be awful and can be really detrimental and send you down a rabbit hole. But ultimately, money is a tool. It is a tool to be generous. It is a tool to provide for your family. It is a tool to help yourself grow. It is a tool. It is not... I don't think that all of you that are listening are trying to be blessed. I love the Kardashians. They're my guilty pleasure. But you're not trying to be the Kardashians and live this opulent, opulent lifestyle. If you are, you probably don't want to be listening to my podcast because I might tell you that might not be the best use of your time or money. But I am, I'm just really passionate about helping women not be weirded out by money and not to be scared to talk about money and to be very confident in what they're asking for and not worry about, is it too much? Is it not enough? I don't know. And just learning how to do that. And we do that in my Recruit the Employer program. So again, I've been getting a lot of questions from people that have been reaching out to me on LinkedIn, on Instagram when I was still on Instagram, been emailing me, applying to different applying to different programs that I have. Um, so if you want to completely forget this episode and not listen to it any further and figure out and do this on your own time, you can go to genoviviano.com slash, slash coaching. And that's going to give you all of my different programs. But I'm going to share a little bit about what programs I have, who is it beneficial for. And then I'm also going to talk about why have I chosen to work specifically with women. I'm going to share a little bit about how my programs work, why certain ones are in a group format and how that's really, really beneficial. I'm going to give you some results of my past clients. And then I'm going to share with you a little bit about how to get involved if that's so compelling to you. 
Regardless, I am so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to have you listen to my episodes and also not even just me, but also listen to other people. We've had amazing guests over the last year and I've learned a lot on this podcast <laughs> about myself, about other people, about what to, how to use this tool best to serve people. So it's been really an honor to have you along for the ride. So let me share a little bit about, let me first start talking about why I chose to work with women this year. So for the majority of my time in career coaching, I'm coming up on five years actually, which is insane to think about (laughs) that I've been living in Nashville alone for three years, which is also insane as well. But I've always worked with men and women. Actually, there was a point in my business where I was mostly working with men and I really love that. For me, I have often believed in the power of empowering women. A lot of the narratives that I hear in media today, I feel like we have either gone to one end of the spectrum or the other. We feel like we have to overpower men. And my best bosses that I've ever had in my career were actually men. And so for me, that was a really hard disconnect because I really appreciated the male mentors that I had. I had amazing experiences with male bosses, but I know that's not everybody's story. I know that's not everybody's narrative. And I know that the glass ceiling and gender pay gap and harassment, that stuff is all real. It just wasn't necessarily real for me. And so I always believed that I never wanted to be a coach, a female coach for females. I like was had my stake in the ground. I was not going to be that person. There's so many women that are doing that. I was kind of probably a little prideful about it, to be honest. And the Lord and I had to have some conversations last year about why I was that way. But if I really, I was getting trying to get really super clear last year and doing a lot of brainstorming and really strategizing and thinking about what I want this brand to be beyond myself. How do I want to help people for years to come? And what's that going to look like for the people that I try to serve, for my family in the future, all those different pieces of the puzzle, right? We all think about that in our career. And I really just come, came coming back to like, who was my ideal client? Who are the people I loved working with? Why did I love working with them? And I realized over the past year and a half, and in my Recruit the Employer, which is my signature program, I have gotten the most amazing women that have had the most amazing results. And it's been so fun to watch them when they first come to me, just feeling not confident where they are in their career. They're mid to senior level managers. They've probably gone to a really impressive college. They've worked their way up in their company and they're just not feeling it anymore. They're not confident in what they're capable of doing. So their selling techniques when they actually get into an interview are crappy. They don't know how to market themselves in the candidate process and they don't have enough time to like spend all their time scrolling online. And so what I really developed was this tool and it's worked for both men and women, but I realized that my females were getting so much more out of it because it was helping to boost their confidence. I had a friend of mine ask me like, what do you do all day? Like, what is your job? And I said, you know, you could look at it one way and say, I give, I give clients tips, strategies, tactics, templates. I help do your resume. I do your LinkedIn profile. I give you all the tools, the physical tools to help move you along in your job search process. But what I think I really do, if I were to sum it all up and look back at past colleague or clients and see what their, you know, their testimonial said and talk to them, I think they would say that I help them get their mojo back. <laughs> I help them see what they were actually capable of doing and helping expand the limiting beliefs that they that you often have, especially women have in the workplace. And I've just been doing a lot of research on it. I've been watching a lot of documentaries. I've been, you know, assuming my own, getting the facts and creating my own uh, hypothesis is based off of that. And again, I, I never wanted to be someone that was a man basher because again, I had really great male bosses and I realized that that's a real thing, but it wasn't for me. So anyways, I um, was just doing a lot of studies and I was realizing that when I had men that were applying to jobs, they would tell me that they were qualified for jobs when honestly, they probably really weren't. <laughs> they would be applying to jobs that didn't make really any sense for them. And some of them were coachable when I was like, eh, may not make sense with where you want to go in your career. And some of them weren't. I did have some people, though my women would not apply to jobs. They'd come to the table and they give me a list of jobs that they're looking at. And I was like, these seem like they're like easy jobs for you. Did you look at jobs that you maybe thought you weren't qualified for and not put them on this list? And nine times out of 10, my women clients would say yes. <laughs> and so I just started to do a little bit more digging. And I, I found this stat that I thought was really interesting. It was a, a stat and it was a study that was done, I believe, by LinkedIn. So I have to like clarify that. Um, I'm pretty sure that it was done by LinkedIn. But it said that that my um, that men apply to jobs when they're only about 60% qualified for. And women tend to ignore every job description unless they feel they are almost 100% qualified for. 
And I believe I've talked about this in other podcast episodes, but I think that stat is so, so telling of where we are as women in our careers, and especially for women in leadership. I I find this to be maybe less of an issue actually with women that are in the younger generation um, because they're living in a different generation. But for women that are in an older generation or that have been in the workforce for 10 plus years, they're probably making over $100,000, which is why I say I specialize in women that are making 100K. They really struggle with this of like, and then what that means is down the road, they're actually keeping themselves from having more of a salary potential because they're opting themselves out before they've even given themselves a shot. And I think that women really feel like time is their thing. Like, I don't want to waste my time. That's what they say. I don't want to waste my time applying for jobs I'm not qualified for because I don't have time. Well, I think that's somewhat true. One, it's called prioritization. We teach you how to do that in the program. (laughs) But I think the second thing is this fear of rejection. It's the fear of somebody telling you when you get rejected from a job you felt like you were stretching for that like, oh, you were right. You weren't qualified for that. And I just hate that for, for, for women. Cause I don't think that's true. That's one thing, one time. And if you keep on pushing through, I really believe that if women started to elevate what they think they were capable of and actually do actions and not just say they believe that, like actually act upon that, it's going to help us all in the long run. So for me, I, when I was writing down like what my mission statement was and really what I wanted this business to look like, why I decided to work with women is because I came up with this, this statement. I'm going to read it to you. I said, I want to help change a generation of career women who show up and own what I'm going to start crying, what they're doing, but don't have to be crazy aggressive in the process. They're kind, they're driven, they're themselves, and they're flourishing. I want to see more women who are stepping up and owning their story, leaning into their strengths instead of worrying about their weakness and owning what they are really, really good at. So for me, when I was reading that, I like, I so felt for that woman. For myself, I was just like, I think that we have learned this narrative that in order to be successful in our career, we have to either come and give up everything at home. It's like all or nothing, right? Or that we feel like we don't have to, we have to be super, super aggressive in the process. Like we have to be like overextend ourselves and be aggressive towards men. And like, it's like we're overcompensating and it looks dumb, right? So I'm, I'm a full believer in that if if you feel like you're an aggressive person by nature, like this doesn't apply to you. (laughs) But for most of my women that work with me, they, they oscillate between like, I don't want to be aggressive. I still want to be myself, but someone tells me I'm too nice. Like, how do I, how do I manage all of this? And I believe that there is a way to be kind, but firm. There's a way to be assertive, not aggressive. And I believe that there's a way to be flourishing and thriving and not focusing on your weaknesses, lady and ladies, and focusing instead on your strengths and the things that you're really good at and doubling down into that. I know for myself in my own career story, when I really, and when I continually to do this, to continue to do this in my business, my business starts to flourish, really owning the things I'm good at and quit trying to make up for the things I'm really not great at. I may have mentioned this before in another podcast episode, but I recently have started working with a business coach and she's really challenging me and I enjoy being challenged. It's why I invested in in a business coach. I believe that if you're looking to hire some sort of coach, whether it's a career coach, health coach, business coach, whatever, just make sure that that person is also investing in themselves because if they don't walk the walk, how can they talk the talk, right? So anyways, she is she had me do this assessment, which is the Colby assessment. If you've never heard of it before and you're interested in taking it, you totally should. It just talks about working style. So it's not necessarily, it's a personality test. It sounds like, but it's more about like your working style. And I was off the charts on being a quick start. So there's four different metrics that they measure you on. And I was pretty low on all of them, except for quick start. And I felt this immediate sense of shame. So I know what you ladies are feeling. Immediate sense of shame. Like, what what do you mean? I can plan things. I can follow through. I'm a good fact finder. And the reality was in my natural tendency and the way that God created me and how I showed up at work, I honestly was really good at being a quick start. Now, there's some negativities, obviously, with that, that, you know, can go into being a negative thing with work, but, but being aware of like, how do I leverage instead of feeling shameful about it, instead of feeling like I need to change it, instead of trying to like maneuver myself to be something I'm not, how do I lean into what I already am, do more of that, and then refine the edges that feel a little bit rough. Right. And so I experienced that a lot of the things that women experience in their nine to five jobs, I know what it feels like to be, to feel shameful. I know what it feels like to worry about, am I being aggressive enough or not aggressive enough? And then confidence is the biggest thing I think that all women really, really struggle with. But I promise you, it doesn't have to be so hard. You do not have to be undervalued. You do not have to be passed up for one too many promotions. 
you do not need to not have a mentor of some sorts. Like all of these things really, really matter to your development and your expansion and your growth in your career. And the other thing that you need to remember is that when you're thinking about negotiating 20K more, the best way to do that for people, whether you're a male or female, is often to change jobs. And so if you are listening to this and you're like, yes, Jenna, I also want to be a part of that movement to change a generation of career women. I believe that I can be assertive and not aggressive. I believe that I can show up and be utilize my strengths. And I want to do more of that in my next career. And I want to find a home, a career or a career home or a company, right? That I can feel like I am excited about, that I feel like I'm being challenged, that I feel like I'm being appreciated. And I feel like that I can provide value to as well. So if that sounds like you, we probably need to be listening a little bit longer <laughs> um, because I'm going to share with you a little bit about why I created Recruit the Employer, um, what that program is, and why I think it really helps that demographic of women, the 100K plus women that are career women that have been probably self-proclaimed overambitious, overachievers. They really focus heavily on their career and they really take that very, very seriously. They really want to succeed in their career and success to them looks like moving up through the ranks. It looks like being on the CEO track. Even if they don't want to be the CEO, they will are on the CEO track and they want to be perceived as a leader in their industry. And so if that sounds like you, keep on listening. I'm going to share a little bit about Recruit the Employer. So Recruit the Employer is an eight-week program that I designed to give you that booster shot in your career to help you deep dive on where you're feeling super stuck and get you unstuck by the end of those eight weeks. And so what I do is I walk clients through kind of four main modules. And first is helping you get clarity on the job. So I find like a lot of people will come to me and they'll say, Jenna, I need my resume done. I need my LinkedIn done. And if you've been listening to me long enough, you know that I think that resumes are dead (laughs) and that resumes aren't really your problem. (laughs) And the real issue with a lot of this is that people don't realize what do they actually want? So many of us go through our careers and oftentimes we go through college way back when And we're kind of told what we should do. We go through that major and we kind of stop after then thinking about what do we want in our careers. And we become like these bottom feeders who I've said this before, we swim along the bottom of the ocean and we wait for a piece of food to drop down and we go towards that to the left or to the right. Instead, I'm trying to create a generation of women that are like sharks or whales at the top, right? Like that you are surveying the scene. You're seeing what you actually want. You're being honest with yourself about what is important to you and you go after that. So the first thing we do in this program is get your mindset right. Because the biggest thing, I can give you all the tools, the tactics, the strategies, but if you don't have your mindset around that CEO level mindset, you are never going to be successful in any program or in your career in general. You have to get your mindset right around what is the value you can bring to the table? Are you worth it? What are the limiting beliefs that you have? And how is that actually holding you back? Are you the one that's holding you back, not the companies that are rejecting you, right? So we talk about that. We talk about what do you actually want? And then we finally talk about in that module, the value that you can bring to the table. So I have a lot of women and I'll hop on a phone call. And if you apply with me, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to say, well, if someone were to ask you, tell me about yourself or why should we hire you? How would you answer that? And most people do this. They like flub it, right? They like have no idea (laughs) how to answer fully that question. And so I want to make sure that from the very beginning of the program, you're starting to think about how do I answer the question, tell me about yourself or why should we hire hire you? Because ultimately at the end of the day, the company wants to know not necessarily the things that you've done just to know that you can check them off their to-do list or their, their check boxes for the job description. They want to know that you're going to produce a return on investment for them. So you have to know what value you bring in the first place. And so many people have gone through their careers and they don't update their resumes and they don't celebrate their work wins and they don't really think about the things that they've been able to do, which I recommend that you do if you're listening to this, but they there's, they don't pay attention to it and they don't spend the time or they don't give themselves the luxury or invest in their own career. They just kind of fly through and hope something's going to stick to the wall and that their career is going to work out. If you are someone that wants to be strategic in your career, you have to give that stuff some thought and some time. So we put some effort and we give you some tools and some resources. And I provide some collaboration on that, on how to make sure that you know what you want and know what the value that you bring. Because once those two things come together, you're going to be ready for the next stage, which is finding the job. So step one is clarity on the job. Step two is finding the job. Finding the job is all about strategically finding the right position for you. So I think what a lot of people do is they'll scroll through LinkedIn and get the alerts and then they get a zillion jobs that are probably not important to them. Here's why that is. 
first of all, the algorithms at LinkedIn are flawed. <laughs> and so if you are a senior level person, you're probably on LinkedIn more than you're on other job search sites. So we're just going to use this. You can use this sentiment for every job search site, but for this one in particular. So one, you're missing out on jobs that are out there that are not listed. So there are plenty of jobs hundreds and thousands of jobs that are not listed on a job search platform. So you are missing out on those in the first place. We teach you how to find those jobs. The other piece of the puzzle is that whenever you're a, when you're having a job alert and you're searching for different maybe titles that you're looking for, every company calls something, something different. So unless you're in like a very structured environment, like when I was in investment banking, it was very clear. It was analyst, associate, VP, director, managing director. Like it was a very clear ascension. Most companies and most industries are not like that. And so what you're doing, if you're saying you want to be a sales manager, you're getting something from Verizon down the street and you're also getting something from, you know, Disney being a senior executive at Disney. So it's, it's really disjointed. So we teach you a process. It's called my funnel method. And I teach you the funnel method and I teach you how to prioritize your time better so that you are not spending hours doing this. <laughs> that is not the goal here to spend hours doing that. So that's the second stage in the process is finding the job. Now we do these two things in conjunction with one another before we even get to marketing to the job. Notice we're not even talking about resumes or LinkedIn first because this process is so important to start doing first. And a lot of people wait to the last minute. So if you're thinking you want to switch jobs in the next year, you need to contact us now because if you wait until you're officially ready, you're going to be too late. And so, yeah, you're just going to be too late. And I've seen that happen all the time. And it's really frustrating when people are like, oh, two months sounds like a long time. I'm like, it usually takes about six months to find a job at your level, six to nine months to find something that you really like, you're really excited about. And we can help accelerate that program. We've had people get jobs in the middle of the program when it just ended. People have started businesses. And I'll share more about that. But you are waiting too long if you think that you're going to wait until you're ready. Like you, if you're thinking about it and you've been thinking about it for a while, it's time to start framing up that storyline if you're thinking about moving in the next year and being overly prepared. So once you get to finding the actual job, we're going to teach you how to network with people at those companies. So I'm going to teach you, give you a bunch of tactics and tools and templates. My clients love my templates um, of reaching out to people and really teaching you how to non-awkwardly network because so many people do networking wrong. And I'm hoping to change your mindset around networking, what it actually means, how it can benefit you and how to utilize it better. So those are the first two modules. The third module is we actually at my team over here, take your resume, take your LinkedIn profile and take your cover letter and do that stuff for you. So you can focus on your family. So you can focus on your work probably that's already overwhelming so that you don't have to worry about, am I writing this bullet correctly? Like, no, you don't even have to worry about that. We're going to tell your story because we know you, right? We know what you're trying to go towards. We know what you want in your career. And we know what the employer is going to want as well. So we take all those things into consideration and we craft some really beautiful resumes, not only aesthetically, but that tell a story. I'm so sick of resumes that are just like a bunch of tasks or even just accomplishments, but they don't tell a story. And so we use a special methodology that we, that we do over here. That's going to help brand you better. Cause it's all about your personal brand. You have to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. So within that uh, module as well, we also talk about how do you talk about yourself? Let's say you do get into a networking situation and they ask you to talk about yourself or they ask you your elevator pitch. How do you talk through that? And so we want to make sure that you're really equipped. And then finally, once you actually get to that interview stage with companies, we teach you, teach you how to land the job. So we teach you how to... Because here's the thing with a lot of people do is... You don't get to practice interviewing. No one taught you how to interview well. And so a lot of people beat themselves up because they're like, oh, I'm so bad at interviewing. And I was like, okay, well, have you practiced a lot? I'm like, well, no, I've only had two interviews in the past 10 years. I'm like, well, no wonder. <laughs> it is a skill set in and of itself. Interviewing is a skill set. And so if you're just not used to it, it's different than public speaking. It's different than one-on-one -on -one meetings. Interviewing is its own skill set. And we teach you a certain methodology around that as well of how to engage in interviews, how to tell your story in those interviews, and how to always think about the person that you're talking to. So we give you a repository of all the most common questions. We mock it out. And then finally, once you get the offer in hand, we teach you how to negotiate that 20K more. So I've had clients that have doubled their salaries, a couple of clients that have doubled their salaries, actually. I've had some clients that have gone up the ranks and gotten promotions as they switched gear. So they applied for jobs that they were, quote unquote, not qualified for. And they ended up getting in sweet, sweet level positions. I've had people that have moved across the country. I've had people that have moved across continents. I've had people that have started their businesses and realized in the process that actually now is the time for them to launch their side hustle. 
I've had women who have um, who have decided that it's actually time to take a sabbatical, and that's been really freeing for them. So every single person that goes through this program has some result in some shape or form, and really understands more about who they are and what they bring to the table, and that their career is valuable, and that their skills are valuable in the marketplace. And for me, it's just awesome when women make more money. That is my most favorite thing. <laughs> It's awesome when, you know, I have clients that will decide to take a sabbatical. I love all of it. All of it's so great. But when they make more money, it's like proving the point, proving the ROI of this program, one. But then two, just proving the point that women are so are capable of so much more. And we often let ourselves sit back and let ourselves, you know, be re- be rejected and then be rejected and let that hold us back. Like it's okay to be rejected. It's kind of like dating, right? Like you're not supposed to marry every single person that you go on a date with. You're supposed to marry one person, hopefully for one time, right? And so, and so with, with the job search process, I think we expect that we want to be liked by everybody. And I make this correlation to dating all the time, but it just doesn't always work out that way. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. doesn't mean you're not talented. doesn't mean you have, don't have something to bring to the table. It just means it wasn't a good fit. And so when it's not a good fit, we take that very personally. And then we think, oh, well, actually, I should be only be making this much money or, oh, I should only be doing that. Like we, we make excuses in order to protect ourselves, but really we're just harming ourselves. And so I really try to help people throughout this program to get them to that spot where they're feeling super confident in what they're able to accomplish. So the way that it works actually is we do this in a group format. So there's some one-on-one time with me. There's a group format. Um, there's support throughout the week and email and a LinkedIn group. We obviously do your resume, your LinkedIn, your cover letter. And then we also have modules for you to listen on your own time. We have them on a mobile app and we provide support throughout the entire process. We want to make sure that all of our women know that they are known. We keep it very small for, for that reason. I want to know every single one of my clients. I want to know their stories. I want to know their career stories, but I also want to know them personally, because I think as women, we are social creatures. We care about the personal as much as we care about the professional, even if we're career driven, right? And so I love the networking aspect of it. And the reason why I chose to do it in a group format, which it was never always, it was never in a group format actually until this year. And the reason why I chose to do it that way, it has been amazing to have these women connect. They live in the same city. They go and connect. They, they reach out to their networks and have their friends, their new friends that they met in this program. Um, I had somebody on a call said, Hey, I want to work for this company. And someone was like, my husband works there. Let me connect you two. And so there's been such beauty in that. And I also had a lot of my clients last year was like, Hey, I would love to meet other people that were in the program. And so we are, we produce this out of people suggesting it. And so we're really excited. Um, We've seen some women really make some amazing moves already. And I'm excited to see kind of what they have in store for the next. So if you are interested, if you think that you resonate with the stories that are being told, that you resonate with the women that are just not feeling confident, you feel like you're being passed over for one too many promotions, you want to make more money in your career, you really are over the narrative that I'm only applying to 100% of the jobs I'm qualified for, than 100% qualified for, right? If you're over that narrative, we would love to support you in that journey. I love helping women see the see their brains light up when I tell them, hey, this is what your story should be. Or like, hey, this is like how I would phrase it if I were you. If someone's asked, asks me, tell me about yourself, this is how I'd phrase it. I think this would be really compelling for the employer. That is the most fun for me is to help them frame that narrative up and say, you actually are really good at this thing. This is really valuable to the marketplace. Let's lean into this a little bit more and sell that better and teaching you how to sell in a non-sleazy way. So if you are looking to get involved, if you think like recruit the employer is the right thing for you, we would love to have you apply. And so the way that you can go about doing that is go to jenaviviano.com slash apply And you could apply to be a part of the group program. We keep these very, very small for a reason. We only have a couple more spots left. Um, But I wanted to share with you here on the podcast because I have gotten a lot of questions about why women, what are your programs, how do they work? And so it feels a little gratuitous on my end because I love to just serve, serve, serve. But I think that hopefully you've gotten something out of this and it's made you think a little bit like, am I lonely in my job search? Am I thinking about a job search in the next year? Am I, am I looking to feel confident in my capabilities? And if so, we have the home for you at Recruit the Employer. So we would love to support you again. If you want to head on, head on over to genoviviano.com slash apply, you can apply through there. And I would love to chat with you a little bit about what's going on with your career. And I will tell you on that phone call if we're a good fit. And if we're not, I will also tell you. And I will direct you to someone else that may be a better fit and may be better directing your issues that you're, you're currently having. So 
Um, hopefully this was really helpful for you today. What was your biggest takeaway from this episode? Um, if you would connect with me on LinkedIn, I'd be so appreciative of that. And tell me what your biggest takeaway was. And then finally, we always love, love, love to have reviews and ratings. So if you've been listening to this for a while and you've really been enjoying it, it's been helping you in your career, please give us a rating and review. It helps other people find this podcast. Um, We do not put ads behind this. We really want this to grow organically and to build a community of women that are listening to this podcast that can connect with one another. And we would so be honored if you would give us a rating as well. All right, guys, if you want to apply, remember, go to jennaviviano.com slash apply to get applied to recruit the employer. And um, otherwise, we will see you next week. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for listening to Your Career Story Podcast. I would love, 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 love to get to meet you. And there are a couple of ways that we can connect in between episodes. First and foremost, you know I love my LinkedIn. Second is via Instagram. And third is over on my website. I actually have a special spot just for you full of fun, free resources. So all you have to do is go to www.genaviviano.com backslash resources. Super simple for a bunch of freebies that will help you boost your career. Hope to see you next week.